female freedom fighters in india the history of indian freedom struggle would be incomplete without mentioning the contributions of women the sacrifice made by the women of india will occupy the foremost place the list of great women whose names have gone down in history for their dedication and undying devotion to the service of india is a long one women's participation in india's freedom struggle began as early as in 1817 when bhima bai holkar fought bravely against the british colonel malcolm and defeated him in guerrilla warfare 30 years before the first war of independence 1857 Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi In 1824 Rani Channamma of Kittur resisted armed might of the East Indian Company She was not allowed to adopt a successor after her husband death by the British and Jhansi was annexed With the outbreak of the revolt she became determined to fight back she used to go into the battlefield dressed as a man holding the reins of the horse in her mouth she used the sword with both hands under her leadership the rani's troop showed undaunted courage and returned shoot by shoot considered by the british as the best and bravest military leader of rebels this sparkling epitome of courage died a hero's death in the battlefield begum hazrat mahal she was also known as the begum of awadh she also played major role during the rebellion of 1857 After the death of her husband Nawab Wazid Ali Shah, she took over the affairs of state of Awadh. During the rebellion, the supporters of Begum seized control of Lucknow as an act of rebellion against British East India Company and declared her son Bijrish Kadra as the ruler of the state of Awadh. Do later it was recorded by the company and Begum was exiled to Calcutta. She drew everyone's attention towards the demolishment of temples and mosques by the company to make way for the construction of roads thus hunting religious sentiments of Indians. Kittur Rani Chennamma She was one of the earliest Indian rulers who fought for freedom. 33 years before the national uprising, this queen of a princely state in Karnataka led an armed rebellion against the British and lost her life in the end. Even today, she is revered as one of the bravest women in Karnataka. Sarojini Naidu She campaigned for the Montego James Fort reforms, the Khilafat issue, the Draconian Rowlatt Act, and the Shatagraho. When Gandhi launched the civil disobedience movement, she proved a faithful lieutenant. With great courage, she quarreled the writers, sold proscribed literature, and addressed French meeting on the carnage at Jallianabad in Amritsar In 1930 when Mahatma Gandhi chose her to lead the salt satyagraha the stories of her courage became legion After Gandhi's arrest she had prepared 2000 volunteers under the scorching sun to raid the Dharshana salt works while the police faced them half a mile up the road with rifle lathis and steel stepped clubs the volunteers widely cheered 
when she shook off the arm of the British police officer who came to arrest her and marched proudly to the barbed wide stockade where she was interned before being imprisoned. Gokhale and Gandhi were her guiding influences. Annie Besant Though she was British socialist, she was a supporter of Indian self-rule. In 1890, she joined Theosophical Society as a member and later became its president thus. She helped in the establishment of Central Hindu College and St. National Collegiate Board in Mumbai in 19. 02. In 1914, when the world was witnessing World War I, she started All India Home Rule League along with Lokmanno Tilak. This body had many branches in India which was active the whole year round and mobilized agitation and demonstrations demanding home rule in India. She also joined Indian National Congress and once became president of the Congress in 1917. Kasturba Gandhi Affectionately called Ba, she was the wife of Mohandas Gandhi. She was a leader of women's Rotagraho for which she was imprisoned. She helped her husband in the cause of indigo workers in Champaran, Bihar and to no tax campaign in Kaira, Gujarat. She was arrested twice for picketing liquor and foreign clothes shops and in 1939 for participating in the Rajkot Shottagraho. Aruna Asaf Ali she participated in public processions during the Salt Shotta Groho. She was arrested on the charge that she was a vagrant and hence not released in 1931 under the Gandhi Arvind Pact which stipulated release of all political prisoners. Other women co-prisoners refused to leave the premises unless she was also released and gave in only after Mahatma Gandhi intervened. A public agitation secured her release. On August 8, 1942, the AICC passed the Quit India Resolution at the Bombay Session. The young Aruna Ashaf Ali presided over the remainder of the session on 9 August and visited the Congress flag at the Gwalior Tank Maidan. This marked the commencement of the movement. The police fired upon the assembly at the session. Aruna was dubbed the heroine of the 1942 movement for her bravery in the face of danger and was called Grand Old Lady of the Independence Movement in her later years. Aruna Ashaf Ali was awarded International Leyland Prize for the year 1964. She was awarded India's highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna, posthumously in 1997. Madam Vikaji Kama During the epidemic of Babonic Plague that hit Mumbai in 1896, she herself got infected with the disease while providing aid to the others. Throughout her life, she struggled for Indian independence from abroad as she was told by her acquaintances not to take part in freedom struggle if she came back to India. While working as secretary to Dadabhai Naroji, she supported the founding of Shamji Krishnavarma's Indian Home Rule Society. 
On 22nd August 1907, she unfurled the Indian flag in Stuttgart, Germany while attending the International Socialist Conference. There she made people aware of the aftermath of the famine, famine that had hit the Indian subcontinent and raised her voice for the human rights and equality in India. Vijay Lakshmi Pandit Vijay Lakshmi Pandit was sister of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and played crucial role in Indian politics. She was the first woman to become cabinet minister. She was designated the post of Minister of Local Self-Government and Public Health. She is well known for her political and diplomatic role during the freedom struggle. She was the first woman president of United Nations General Assembly. She was also the first woman ambassador in the world who attained the position in three countries, Moscow, Washington and London. Shuchita Kripalini She was a freedom fighter and worked closely with Mahatma Gandhi during partition rights in India. She also played major role in politics by joining Indian National Congress. During the formation of Constitution of India, she was elected as a member of the Drafting Committee of Constituent Assembly. Another feather to her cap is attached when she sang Vande Mataram in her Constituent Assembly. She was also elected as the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh State after independence. Durga Bai Deshmukh She was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi and thus played active role in Gandhi Shatagrav movement and played role of Indian struggler, a lawyer, a social activist and a politician. She was a Lok Sabha member as well as a member of Planning Commission of India. While being member of planning commission, she launched a central social welfare board through which she improved condition of education, women, children, handicap and rehabilitation of needy person. Usha Mehta She was one of the youngest freedom fighters of the Indian freedom movement. She was hardly five years old when she met Gandhi and was inspired by his ideals. At the age of eight, she participated in the Simon Gobek protest. A very great contribution to her credit is the origination of Congress Radio also known as Secret Congress Radio, which was an underground radio station which was active for few months during the Quit India movement of 1983. Due to this clandestine activity, she was imprisoned in Vardhava jail of Pune. Savitri Bai Phule Along with her husband, Jyotira Phule, she played an important role in improving women's rights in India during British rule. The couple founded the first women's school at Birevadai in Pune in 1848. She also worked to abolish discrimination and unfair treatment of people based on caste and gender. She is described as one of the first generation modern Indian feminist and an important contributor to world feminism in general as she was both addressing and challenging not simply the question of gender in isolation but also issues related to caste and casteist patriarchy. Women shouldered critical responsibilities in India's struggle for freedom. They held public meetings, organized picketing of shops selling foreign alcohol and articles, sold khadi and actively participated in national movements. 
they bravely faced the baton of the police and went behind the iron bars hundreds and thousands of indian women dedicated their lives for obtaining freedom of their motherland the above mentioned women are but a few among them thank you for watching the video if the video is helpful to you please like share and subscribe to our youtube channel all about chiki